Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Yep. Okay. Uh, are we all set? You're good. It just took me a little while. My connection was bad. Okay. Um, we don't need to actually start recording now because we're waiting for people to come on. You got it. Hold on. I'll pause it. Okay, um, good evening. It is Wednesday, October 13th at 7.18 p.m. This is a meeting of the Marina Advisory Committee. And um, for members, I think we have everyone on, uh, but Sam, um, Ed Kane, are you on? I see him. No, oh, I'm here. This is Sam. Sam, and you're on. Okay. Yeah. Um, the only one we appear to be missing is um, Will Barrio. Okay. Um, we have our agenda. Um, I just want to make one comment at the beginning. Um, when I send out the agenda, um, I always request that you let me know if you can make the meeting. That's important. If you could do that, that way I know if we have a quorum and we can accommodate everybody's schedule. Um, the first item is the uh, minutes dated September 15th. If you want to take a minute to look at those and offer any additions or corrections. Does anyone need any more time? No? Okay, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Walter, second? I'll second it. Martha. Okay, um, roll call, Walter? Aye. Uh, Flip? Aye. Um, Martha? Aye. Uh, Ed? Well, he's an alternate. Kevin? Aye. Okay. Um, Sam? Aye. Okay. No, it passes. Um, the next item was requested by Kevin. Um, the subject is Marina Ice Machine. Kevin? Um, I was approached by uh, a couple members of the Wellfleet Shellfish Association, and they wanted to know how we felt on uh, an ice machine uh, like they have in Provincetown. And uh, I didn't have any answers, so I uh, asked to have it put on the agenda for tonight. Uh, what do you all think about it? You're talking about a real ice machine, not a not a vendor with bags, right? No, I'm talking just like Provincetown, where they pay by the pound, and that okay. money would go back into the Mariner uh, Enterprise Fund. What would a machine like that cost? Um, I have no idea. Uh, and, and would it also require any special water hookups? The, the water would have to be uh, filtered. And from what I understand, all the private uh, shellfish uh, grants that have, uh, uh, that have home ice makers, that's supposed to be tested by the health department. Uh, and I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that's being done or not. I'm, I'm just uh, bringing up one of their concerns that was brought up to me. For me personally, I think it's a it's 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 something to investigate. I can get some numbers and see. And I'm sure, especially with uh, Vibrio, 
uh, that there are grants available. And to be honest with you, I don't know why it wasn't researched when it became such a, uh, an issue with everybody having ice at the harbor for the shellfish. How is it a machine like that? How is it controlled? I mean, price-wise, how's it monitored? They they, uh, they have a camera, and it's it's an honest system, and then it's built by Provincetown ones built uh, built out by uh, the the poundage that the uh, people take. So what do they do? They weigh their own ice as they, as they get it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Kevin, who would this benefit? Uh, the enterprise fund. And no, no. it would, it would benefit, benefit the shell fishermen, the commercial fishermen. I'll be honest with you, uh, I got a home ice machine. There'd be no need for me to have a home ice machine. Um, so uh, it would benefit the charter people, I, I believe, and uh, the commercial uh, shellfish people. So, so would something like this be locked off so the general public couldn't use it? Um, I think that's something we could look at. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, it's a situation like we were talking about the, um, um, the grants, there has to be a balance. Uh, we are, a, uh, not only a recreational, but we are a working harbor. Uh, there's a lot of commercial boats that come and go out of our harbor. And uh, I think that's an availability that uh, I'd be happy to investigate it more and see if there's grants available. Uh, it's just something that I'm not gonna waste my time if the board doesn't feel like it's something that they wanna invest the time and energy into. Dave, do you need a, uh, a charter captain? Do you need a nice machine down there? I do not, I have one, but... Um... I guess my my only question would be maybe um, if it's if it's to primarily benefit the shellfish, then you know um, maybe they should approach us, you know, um, and and ask us um, what they think or, or approach the town and 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 get it that way. I don't know whether or not um, we need it. Um, like Kevin says, he has one. I have one. But Dave, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd unplug mine. Mine runs all, all, all year. I wouldn't even use it. I'd much rather get it at the harbor. Right, right. Well, I, for me, it, it um, I, I had mine put in, uh, and the, uh, um, I, I had uh, it inspected. Uh, the plumber had, had, uh, had it inspected before. I have a stamp from the town on it. Um, I'm pretty confident that my ice is clean. Um, uh, I wouldn't use it uh, uh, to answer your question. I, I wouldn't have a need for it. I don't oppose someone else getting it, though. I mean, I, if, if it's going to make money for the enterprise fund, I, I'm not against it. You know, I, I don't feel as though that's a, um, you know, uh, uh, something that we shouldn't do. I just feel if you're asking for me from a from a charter captain's perspective, I don't need it. It, it sounds like the the primary people benefiting from it would be the shell fishermen. Yes, I would say so. Right. And if that's the case, um, you know, why aren't they spearheading it, doing the research and coming to us and others with facts and figures? As I said, it was mentioned to me, I'm bringing, I'm bringing it to forward to the board to see what the board's reaction would be. That's all. So if you, if you want the uh, Wellfleet Shellfish Association to present it to the board, like I just had, then I'll, I'll relay that information. Well, hey, uh, I don't see any real problem with it myself, uh, especially if it was uh, to benefit the enterprise fund. Uh, I don't know how you go about sizing it. I mean, the, the, the uh, most of the commercial fishermen are draggers. Uh, and if they're dragging oysters, they I suppose they need it in the summer. Uh, if uh, you know, I don't. I don't know how uh, you you'd set it up so that a uh, private person could use it, because some guys, you know, they go fishing and they want ice. Uh, and if, you know, if you if you threw twenty bucks into the machine every little while and you got your ice, that would be pretty handy. Uh, 
you know, the size of the thing would be one concern and, uh, the, you know, electric power and water. That's, that's, those are the three things, you know, and then how, you, how are you going to, how are you going to charge, you know, uh, yeah. but I, I, like I, yeah. I don't have any, uh, you know, and, and I think we're the ones to approach because it is a marina thing, you know, uh, that's all I got. I, I just like to see some real research done on something like that, and, you know, like how some other towns handle it, you know, like one, what the cost of operating a machine like that would be and what the maintenance would be. I, I know I used to have a couple of major ice machines and we, we had some maintenance issues with them. Um, but the other thing is, uh, you know, exactly how it be operated and whether you need personnel right there all the time. Um, you know, you talk about an honor system and you know exactly how that's done and like do a cost analysis on it yeah i think you're gonna need a, a, a little shed built for it because those things can't handle all the weather um right. they're you know extra huge machine too to accommodate the need for some of these guys i mean they you know it, you know how much ice people use in the summer it's amazing how much ice you can go through in a quick short period of time um I don't know. I, yeah, I agree. And I know those things are wicked expensive. I mean, you're talking probably, you know, eight to 10 grand for the machine to start out. Um, so yeah, it's definitely research should look, be looked at on that, I would say. Yeah, if there was a grant available, that would be the main thing, I think. Right. Yeah. And so I, was, I think, it, go ahead. There was a grant. There was a grant available from the Department of Public Health. And the fishermen who actually filled them out and did the water test got some of them. So there were there was a ice machine. Excuse me, there was a mechanism for the town to get one through grant money. Um, so that's not the first time this has been brought up, but I think there was somebody started the grant and never finished it. And the other thing is, Provincetown does not sell ice by the pound, so to speak. It's by the fish tote or a, a vat that might translate into a pound, but that way there nobody's weighing it. So you go in the ice chest. And you shovel it into your fish tote is full, and they mark you down for a tote. And a tote cost X, a tub cost X, each size thing cost X. So you're not trying to weigh this or something. Oh, yeah, um, a bucket. Yeah, a bucket is, is that. I mean, everything has a price on it, and it, and it is basically on the honor system. And um, they give you the key, you open the door up, you fill your tubs, take the key back. They tell you, tell you, tell them what you have. They write it on a board. At the end of each month, you get a bill. And I believe that that whole thing was bought through grant money. And that's a reefer unit up there. It's a trail. Of, it's a it's a box, right, Alfred? Yeah, they bought just a regular shipping container box, right. a stainless steel box, so that it's not the prettiest thing. But I imagine it's really cheap compared to buying other types of ice boxes. Yeah. But you're not going to throw money into it. It's just basically a a trailer truck truck door that opens sideways, like you know a refrigerator unit. And you know the, the ice drops out of the ceiling, and you shovel whatever you need, and tell them, and then get billed. But I do believe that that all came through grant money, and I believe if the shellfish department and the, and the marina gets together, they probably could go to, to the Department of Public Health because that's where the Vibrio money came from before. And I do sell ice to the fishermen. And I have no, I have no problem with a, with an ice box putting me out of business for that. Well, should we make a motion? Will, what do you think? Uh, <clears throat> I, I think it would really be really important to see a, a cost benefit analysis on, on an ice machine for the marina. Um, being an enterprise fund, we we. Um, we, we would have to look at things that would at the very least run even if not uh, in the positive. Um, and, and then we would need to know uh, what the need is uh, for ice in Wolfley. Not that they need it, but an actual um, the range size of machine versus, versus the cost of it. Um, that would be really important. Plus, the um, you know maybe what 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 P Town does uh, sell for ice, um, and, and what their numbers are versus uh, you know their their cost and and uh, and profits uh, on that type of machine. 
we and then we'd also have to factor in the manpower um, and having the manpower to do that uh, and, and constantly maintain uh, something additional at the marina. Um, right now, you know, every everything would be an extra. So that would take away from something else that we we're trying to do. So it, it, we would really have to um, weigh out the benefits of that. We're not a, opposed to a nice machine being down here, um, whether it be a shell fishing, uh, a shellfish department thing or a marina thing. Um, but we really need to have some solid info. I, I know that previously um, this was brought up to us to uh, to explore. And at that time, it was a, uh, a saltwater machine that was requested, which looking into that, the maintenance of a saltwater machine is absolutely insane. Um, and, and that we were also told. But keeping that up to, to a health code, um, being a town as well, we would need to make sure that, that this thing is um, properly maintained, used, serviced. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't know what kind of uh, real honor system uh, the town could work on as opposed to um, you know, if it's a key and we're allowing someone to go in with the tote, that wouldn't really be an honor system. Well, that would be a, a, a sale basis. You'd have to get what they're taking first and, and sell that. So we would just really need to weigh all that stuff out to see what, what kind of waters we're getting into with that sort of machine. Um, also, what came up last time this came around, I think it was, I think it was three, four years ago was the extra things that um, people wanted included in it. Um, I remember, you know, I'm not sure who it was, but one of the select board members, something was saying that, you know, they even wanted a uh, conveyor belt to lift the uh, ice totes onto the, the vehicles for people. Um, so, you know, things, things spiraled out of hand quickly. Yeah. So I think, Sorry, I don't know if the dredge company's getting a little loud there. Um, so I think that's mainly mainly what we need to look into. But again, if it's um, if the enterprise fund could support it and, and profit off of it, it's something we could do. Yeah, you lie down. But also, you know, we got to keep in mind the, the manpower issue. So a lot of parts. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, um, a very basic at this point. But I mean, it's certainly if, if grants are going to pay for it, that eliminates the initial cost. Just if we could find out somehow what, what the maintenance would be on something like that as well. So my question to you all would be, do I pursue this and get some inf more information to go by, or is it just going to be um, something that may not, may not uh, initiate go? I mean, I'm all for an ice machine down the harbor. So I, I'll... Uh, if it's okay with the board, I'll see about getting some information in, in regards to that. Yeah, I think some uh, preliminary uh, figuring should be should be done, you know, just to see if it's a possibility. And then if it looks like a possibility, then you pursue it further. But if it's something crazy, then, then that's it. But, you know, call P-Town and talk to them maybe, you know. Yep, that's what I was planning on doing. Yeah, I think that'd be worth it. Kevin, you might also want to check with the um, Shellfish Board to see if they're doing any research on it. I'd be happy to. Yeah, that way you're not, you know, it was their idea, so they may, may be doing some research. You know, well, it, it, as Will said, this has been going on for four years, and actually if they, they had the opportunity to, to jump on it when Vibrio was a big, big deal and that they were pushing ice and everything back then. And I'm sure there were a lot more grants back then than there are now in regards to that. 
Yeah, they never really did much with it. No. I mean, I'd much rather have, you know, from a oyster farmer's perspective, I'd rather have the harbor deal with it, you know, more than the shellfish department myself. Who is speaking, please? Oh, sorry. Uh, William. Will Barrio? Yeah. Okay. All right, stop. I'm on the phone. Sorry about that. I'm on okay. kid duty today, too. Yeah, I'd just like to, Kevin, when you do this, I'd like to, you know, see you draw up some, you know, facts, like, you know, one, the cost of the machine, uh, what they, just a ballpark figure, what it costs to operate water and electricity wise, and, and then what the yearly maintenance would be, and, uh, you know, what type of a structure that you'd need around it to support it. Well, like Alfred said, we, you know, all they have up there is a reefer box. It's a trailer box sitting on the ground. Yeah. Um, and again, as a harbor committee, uh, we should be looking at the, the, the shell fishermen and the commercial people as, um, as also a resource, not only the recreational people. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, it is, it is a working harbor and being a working harbor, there are grants available, as Will knows, that for a working harbor. So I'll look into it. How's that? Yeah, I would support that. You yeah. Make you look make into, and then um, you get back to us, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't think we need a motion on that unless you want one until no. until Kevin comes back with information. No. no. How do you want to proceed? You want to have Kevin do the do some research and get back to us? Yeah, I think so. I okay. think that'd be right. Yeah. All right. Why don't we plan on that then? Okay. Uh, Harbor Master Report. Will? Want to fill us in? Yeah. So mostly what we've been dealing with at this point is the ongoing dredging, which um, has started and commenced. Actually, um, let me try to screen share a... Uh, a photo of the uh, progress chart. We put up a, um, a progress chart in our office, um, right where the um, you know slips and moorings are on the wall. So you can see it as you walk by in the window. So the colored in areas down here is uh, one of the scows that's working. And uh, in here, in here, and in here. Today, they were in this area. And currently, right now, it looks like they're shutting down, and they are right up against here, in that area. Um, dredge number number two or number one, depending on which way you look at it. The other one's working in this area right here. So each block, each color, or you know, different variation represents a different um, progress. So you know, day one, day two, day three, sort of like that, um, leading up to it. They've been. Um, They've been, each one's been filling about a scow a day, at least a scow a day, and then uh, tugging it out at the nighttime right now. And currently to, to deal with that and the, the shifting needs of the crews, what we've been up to is flip-flopping boats on docks. We had, we had the boats on here. And then as they tried to dig into this area, we had to move the boats over to this area right in here. And then as they progress over to here along these pilings, hopefully tomorrow, they'll be getting that amended area working right in there and in between the pilings with a, hopefully with a slight bucket change on that and then working the way into here. So then at that point, we'll have to flip flop the docks kind of again and get them over a different area. Probably what I was told was a day or two and they could finish up at least in here if not here to get these docks and uh, uh, gangway back in place for everybody. So that's currently what uh, what we've been up to. Well, can I ask you a question? Um, sure. When when um, the project started, uh, did you have a time frame as to when they were going to get to the actual slippage area in the back? In the back? Yeah, yeah. They we were no, they're going to work their way in from here. Um, 
I don't believe we have an exact time estimate of that process, but what was requested in order to do this work was a, um, a complete stop in traffic as they approach, because after this one's done here, these both barges will be working in and then out. Okay. Um, so so the, the, the reason why maybe, um, and, and I'm, I guess I'm asking because, you know, you've, you've, we've, we've been moving flip-flopping all of these dockage docks around. Um, would it be feasible for you to put uh, dockage just in the A dock right now with a ramp? So that, you know, all, all of the boats, like, like today, just for an example, from me, from my standpoint, um, I came in, I had to raft up to a uh, mini dragger. Um, I couldn't offload my gear. Um, so I had no option because uh, of the tide and, and time. So I'm just wondering whether or not that's an option. We're putting it over by where the A dockage is, maybe some kind of a float and a gangway. And then maybe that would help alleviate some of the, um, the boat um, congestion uh, or, the, or the dockage congestion, at least temporarily, uh, un unless you're, you're saying that we wouldn't be able to get by those skegs. So that was something that we brought up uh, to talk with them tomorrow morning about when we meet with them, um, putting that out back so we, we could stop the flip-flopping yeah. in here for a few days at least so they get this area done. Um, obviously, they, they were hoping to start a week earlier than they have, but they didn't. So, so yeah, that, that's something we will be talking about tomorrow is that if reasonably they're not going to be past sort of this area, the boats can go out and around. Yep. giving a safe margin along this progress right in here. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we are in discussions with them and we will be tomorrow morning. We got, you know, progress plans every, every couple times a day from them. Where they're no, I understand it. I understand it's a moving, it's a moving uh, yeah. uh, thing. I get that. You know, I just, I, I, I'm just throwing that out as, as, as a suggestion and maybe something that could be, you know, discussed. No, I, I brought that same that same thing up to him this afternoon and said, you know, we, that we need to give everyone a, a place to be for a little bit, and it'd be a lot easier if we could just keep it for a little while till. I mean, if if it's like two, three days, four days, and both scows are working in this area, then we could set back up the fuel dock and the mosquito dock and be perfectly fine and comfortable and have this dock, like you said, somewhere in here. Yeah. So I, I yeah, and we'll meet with them again on that tomorrow. Okay, and, and my last question, as far as timeline in the morning, I plan on uh, pulling in there at seven o'clock and, and going to the L pier and offloading. Is that gonna be a, an issue? No, they said they'll, they'll start digging in here around 10 a.m. Okay. I mean, so we were gonna start working previous to that to see what we can and get going and kind of have a, a meet and plan with them in, sometime in the morning when they arrive. So I'll no, get down. no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. I was laughing at Kevin's dog, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, anything else for Will? Okay. Um, Marina Concerns. Um, as you know, the select board had a meeting last night. We were on the agenda for our motion. Um, they didn't take a formal vote on our motion, but all members spoke positively about the need to provide us what was in the motion. That is ongoing communication um, with um, anything related to the um, change in the uh, shellfish beds. Um, I gave a brief outline about our concerns, safety and navigation. Um, there was discussion, David and Walter were there. Um, they, the, there was also Rebecca Taylor and Tom Shagia from the Shellfish Advisory Board. And um, after I gave um, presentation about our concerns about um, equipment and so forth. Um, Rebecca Taylor, the chair, was quite critical of this committee um, 
that we have not fulfilled a commitment to them um, to send certain information and that um, um, the information she referred to was um, what Tom had said in our July 14th meeting, a uh, recommendation about meeting and a recommendation when we meet to bring to the table five good things and five things that were not working well from our perspective. Um, Rebecca said that we failed to bring that to the board. I went back and looked at the tape. That is not accurate. Um, when Tom spoke at the tape, he threw that out as a suggestion when we do meet together. She also stated to the board, she'd be willing to send this committee um, some materials to educate us on shellfish grants. Um, the, the conversation then went to, um, to the issue of pilings. Uh, selecting DeVosto stated that uh, his expectation was that we would have all new pilings. Um, as you know, I've been working on that issue. I initiated concern about it. Uh, we've discussed it at length at the dredging task force. Um, looking at the calendar um, that we were feeling an obligation to have everything ready for, for boaters um, in the springtime. And um, the contractor removed all the pilings. 30 of them were determined to be junk to put on a barge. Um, and counting the pilings, um, I think we need at least 60 pilings. The contractor put 17 aside that he said has some life um, left in, in them. Um, I learned that the money to purchase pilings uh, cannot come from the town's um, dredging fund without a modification made to that article. So I made a request to the town administrator um, to put that on the agenda and the warrant for the special town meeting um, to transfer, you know, to modify the article, to transfer a set amount of funds allowing the town to purchase new pilings. Now, what we learned from the contractor was that at no cost to the town, he will put in 30 new pilings. We just have to provide them. In discussion with the dredging task force, um, they thought it was a good idea and endorsed that idea and, and um, offered to recommend to talk to the contractor while he's here already and we don't have to pay an additional mobilization fee uh, to get a price from him to put the additional pilings that would be needed in. Um, so I'd like your thoughts and your comments about that issue, please. I think um, I'd, I'd like to start. I don't think um, that's completely accurate. Um, the Selectman DeVasto didn't say he expected new pilings. He said he expected that completely bad ones wouldn't be put it back in, which they're not going to be. Also, um, 23 pilings are discussed and they're willing to install for free. 28 of them are need to be replaced. So the, the information is not totally accurate. Um, also, there is a long lifespan left in the current pilings that we have available, the rest of the pilings. So um, when even when asked today, that contractor said they would easily last a decade. Um, in the pilings that were taken for disposal, they found no worms, no pilot trails, anything else. They were just old and decrepit, those ones. The rest of them were said to be in excellent shape to put back in. And he said that he wouldn't be recommending doing that unless they were. So that would leave us at 28 pilings to be put back in. 23 would be completely zero replacement cost except for the material themselves. 
the additional five would be have to be paid for. One, I'd have to go back and look at the tape, but my recollection is Selectman DeVasto said he wanted new pilings in there. And two, I think the question for discussion is, um, do we want to recommend the usage of pilings that have already been in there um, if we're going to get only 10 years out of them? This is a one-shot deal. We're not going to be dredging in the near future again. Um, no, we're not going to be dredging, but it is not a one-shot deal. Actually, also what was asked of the Marina Advisory was to come up with a comprehensive plan for the Marina, which would include new pilings, mostly paid for, hopefully by a seaport economic grant to go along with new docks, finger piers, things like that, and a complete overhaul of this marina on a layout that could be done, considering especially that we have our uh, last capital project coming to um, fruition in the next couple of years. We do have approximately $150,000 a year that should be available to us to spend on a, on a marina overhaul. And instead of putting, putting in um, those, that has been recommended uh, instead to actually come up with a solid plan instead of band-aiding this marina, come up with a solid plan for the future. So actually it would come at almost no cost to us except for those filings to continue operations better than we currently have them and continue onward with a more strategical plan for this marina in the future. So where would the money come for the new pilings that are needed now to replace the ones that have been discarded? From those pilings, what we are hoping is that would be a change order with the state on this dredging project since they were taken out and had to be destroyed, those specific amounts. So then most likely that the grant would cover 50% of that cost for those specific pilings, those 23 that had to be taken out and destroyed. Now, could the enterprise fund uh, provide any of this? It would be part of the dredging um, if, if we did it as part of the dredging, the state would cover a 50% match. And that's what we're hoping for. So that way we would only be on the hook for half of the money for those uh, 23 to 28 pilings. Now, how much does a one piling cost? At, at dealership cost, around a thousand. When we asked the engineer at a dredging task force meeting in May um, for that information, he said the quality of pilings varies and that a decent quality piling installed material and labor would be between 2,500 and 3,000 a piece. Yeah, but we don't have to look at any installation charges if they're doing that under this contract. Well, they said they would do what, 30? 23. Okay. So we're looking at, for, from B dock all the way down, we're looking at about 60. No, we're looking at 28. They're installed, reinstalling the pilings that they already have, that we had back into place. Those are the total numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, Copy. let me ask you, if, if you don't mind, uh, the, the, the the pilings that are being reinstalled that, that have like a longevity of, of uh, based on what the experts are telling us, 10 years, um, what what would that, what would that outlay be if we put new pilings in? What would, uh, what would be the downfall of that if we were to put new pilings in um, rather than put the existing pilings back? We would be paying twice for that installation. And we'd be paying for that extra material at this current time. Now, I seem to remember uh, seeing Winkler put in pilings and not having too much trouble with them. Uh, in 10 years, if we have to replace, you know, 20 pilings and Winkler can come down with his crane and his, his machine, uh, I, I think we could wait the 10 years personally. There's a lot of other stuff that has to happen. Alfred, your thoughts? Oh, I have a question on the, on the 21 pylons because there's 30 of them on the bars that left. 
23 filing. Excuse me? 23 are covered, 28 total. So 30 on the barge. So oh, this out is, of the, this is so what they told me. So if you want to argue over the two, I guess we could. No, but, no, I'm trying to find out where the numbers are coming from, Will. That's all. The numbers are coming directly from AGM. The people who hauled them, disposed of them. Okay. Them. So, so AGM said that there was 21 that would be re that they would 20, pay to reinstall. 23, 23 would and, be a cost. And the uh, and the from the three to the eight. Why is there a discrepancy? Well, what Unless is the discrepancy? The discrepancy is that they were no good, they broke, or they were old. They were too old to put back in. Like, again, that he said, he would not be, he could not put in any piles and wouldn't or shouldn't put in any piles that are not sufficient to last at least that long. So what you're saying is there were 23 that needed to be replaced, but then there were another five that were broken that also needed to be replaced. And that's where the 28 comes from? Correct. Okay. So using their numbers, because I'm that's fine. How many pylons in the B, C, D, and E section would be missing at the end of this approximately? Zero, because we would buy those 28 and put them back in, so then there would be zero pilings missing. So there's going to be a piling next on both sides of every boat? No, we'd have exactly the same amount as we had before, but we wouldn't have any of the broken or old pilings. Uh, no. I, so basically, we will have the same amount of pilings as pre-dredging pre started. We would have the same amount, but we wouldn't have any half broke. We wouldn't have any um, old and decrepit breaking pilings. So we would have the exact same number, but they would be in top quality shape. How many are missing? How many are missing? Well, how many? Total, how, having having said that, every everything gets put back in place. And we're looking at, at the back of that slippage area. How many are actually missing that they don't have two on each side? I think there's approximately six, eight of them. Uh, Bob Hussey, I think you were trying to get on. Are you there? Yeah, uh, yeah can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, please. Uh, just a question from the gallery. Well, you said this 28 pylons plus the, what is it, approximately 17 of the ones that they reset behind the main pylons to use over again? I don't know exactly how many they have. Yeah, I counted 17 that they left there. So 28 and 17 is? 45. 45. How many slips, how many actual slips are there in, in B, C, D, and E section? Well, how, how many pilings are missing? I don't know how many slips there are. I'd have to count them. I'd also Bob, I counted, I counted about, uh, about um, 56 in that vicinity. I, I was going to say, I thought there was approximately 20 slips per section. So uh, that's two, four, you know, I think that's somewhere around 60 slips. Yeah. I don't know how 51 pylons are going to fit cover 60 slips. Well, it would cover it exactly how it did before they started dredging, except that we would have new pylons. Yeah, but I think, Will, I think before they started dredging, I counted 17 missing pylons. Okay. So what you're saying is that we should start an inquiry on where the all the extra pylons went. Well, I think they're all broke. They were broken, all broken off. There's a lot of a lot of broken off pylons down there before they started dredging. All the more reason for a comprehensive plan to get this marina back on track and stop band-aiding everything, don't you think, Bob? 
I agree with you a hundred percent with what you're saying, but we, you know, you, how, how are people going to be tying up boats without fender pylons? If you got a 15 foot outboard, that's fine. But if you got a 15, 18 ton boat without fender pylons, you're going to have some problems. So what you're saying is the numbers are inaccurate and we need to ask them where they went and get a better count. Cause I know they GPS every single one that they pulled. So we could just simply ask them and get an exact count. Right. I mean, I watched numbers. them trying, I watched them will trying to get the broken stubs out and they never found them. They never came up in that small clamshell. So no uh, one was using them before the dredging. What's that? So if, if they were broken stubs, no one was using them before the dredging, correct? Nobody was using what? The pilings that you're saying that were broken stubs that, that they couldn't find or couldn't get out. So no one was actually tying their boats off to those broken pilings, correct? I don't think anybody ties to the piling, but there were broken ones there that I saw they didn't get stubs out of. So uh, are you saying it's, there's still pilings there? I have no idea if the if the broken if the missing pylons still had the stubs in the mud or, or they don't. I have no idea. I know they were dropping a, a thing over trying to trying to find them. Uh, but I have no idea. But I'm what I'm saying is is as I'm sure you're well aware of there are missing pilings there, and they have been for years. Every year there seems to be one or two more, you know, get missing or get broken. All what I'm asking, reasons. go ahead. All the more Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I didn't want to cut you off. Go ahead. I was saying all the more reason to do this right, take our time, get an 80% grant from Seaport and Economic Council and do this right. Well, I have no problem with that. And, yeah. and when they go to redo it, they can always take pylons out and reset them again. That's not, that's not a big issue. So we'd be paying to put them in twice because they're going to charge us per piling to install. So they'll be charging us to install them now. And then when they come back to redo this marina, they'll be charging us to take them out and put them back in again. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I can't speak to that. I have no idea what kind of contractual agreement that's in this contract now about taking uh, pylons out and putting them back. Uh, just to follow up, Bob, on the, the number, um, I think you and I both arrived at about 60. If you take Will's um, number of 28 that have to be replaced and you use the 17 that are left over, supposedly in good condition, that gives us 45. We're still short 15. So what yeah, you're saying that, is that, that could very well be. So, so. So the numbers don't add up from the dredging company is what you're saying. I don't know what the dredging company uh, provided. What I do know is I just told when, you. I, when I when I do know is when I made the count, I included those that were missing. And I went all the way down the entire so, length. So we're not comparing apples to apples. You're including pilings that were already missing prior to dredging. Yes. That have to be replaced. Eventually, yeah, but they weren't being used because well, they were already made. they have to be, I mean, now we're in agreement they have to be replaced by the spring for the summer boating season? No, you already said that they were missing, so they weren't being used to begin with. They weren't there to begin with. Well, they weren't being used because they were missing. Exactly. So they weren't being used, so then they don't have to be replaced until we come up with a better plan to replace this. Replace the pilings, fix the docks and come up with a comprehensive plan for this marina, not band-aiding things. Well, just speaking for myself, I think the goal is by the spring um, to have the missing pilings replaced and ready to go for the summer. What do others think? I, I, can, see, I can see Will's point about like a master plan and a comprehensive plan. But I, I think too, that when we're talking about, you know, like coming up with a, an additional 15 pilings to have every single piling in, in a marina slip 
and we have the opportunity now to maybe have you know some assistance to put them in. Um, I think maybe we could put all those pilings in. I mean, if we're talking about 15 additional pilings, then we've got those in, and then we can feed off the master plan off of that. Um, otherwise, we're going to have you know some pilings that are put back, and then we're going to have like another 15 additional new pilings, like five, six, seven years from now. So we might as well have them all on the same level playing field at this point, and then work the master plan off of that. I think that's, that's a good idea. You know, boaters have an expectation in a $20 million project, a lot of it coming from the town, that when the boating season arrives, they have um, good docks, deep water, and all the pilings that are supposed to be in there including the ones that have been missing. All the more reason to do this properly and set up a plan for the future. Well, I think there has to be some immediate measures taken, you know, in order to pay for them, in order to order them. Oh, well, I got the phone. And, and there have been immediate measures taken and that will be almost 30 new pilings put in for, an extreme so that'd be, fraction of the cost of what you're talking about. So how many are we actually short? You've seen this place of fact other people and negative ways. Yes. So what are you figuring that there's that there was there's 60 slips in there and there should be what like one every other slip? It should be like 30 pilings and we only have 17, something like that. We figured a piling for every boat. Well, then there should be 60 pilings. Yes. And Will is saying that we need a minimum of 28 new ones. And then on the table for discussion are the 17 older ones that have some life left in them. Alfred, what is your view on that? Alfred? Yeah. Alfred, are you on? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, Did you hear what well, I, I think, just said? I do. I think the whole um, discussion is whether or not we're going to wait for a master plan or whether we're going to do it now. And I think that's what the... Um, the Marina Committee is, is being asked because um, even if you use the pylons that have a 10-year life cycle in them, you still don't have enough. So I think that's the whole, or seems to be the whole debate, whether you're going to dredge it, put the pylons in now, or dredge it, and wait for grant money to do it. If you take, if you take um, Will's figures of needing a minimum of 28 new ones. Um, you use the existing 17, that brings you to 45. You're still short 15. And so what you end up needing is 28 in 15, which is 43. But what, what I heard Will say was those that are missing don't have to be replaced now for the start of the summer. I think that's a discussion that's on the table. Oh, I don't disagree. <laughs> that's a discussion. And, um, and in your view, should the missing ones be there for the start of the summer? Oh, well, I thought that they would have been part of the project. No. That's all. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's, how I, that's how I see it. What do the others think? I mean, I think that's what the people who have the slips think, at least the ones I've talked to. Well, that's they what I be... referred to when they're looking at the finished product, they're paying two or three grand for a slip. Um, I think what they're saying is it's a reasonable expectation that the missing ones would be put in there, that there'd be 60 pilings. So if that's the case, we're looking at the purchase and installation of 43 new ones. If, I'm not gonna debate the number, I don't know. I mean, I thought I counted. It doesn't matter. 
I, I, I'm a little confused here because I thought that there were going to be uh, 28 new ones and then you were going to salvage 17 that had a shelf life of 10 years. So that gave us 45. And, right, then, you'd have you... to, and then you'd have to get an additional 15 to make it 60. Yes. Why not do it? Where's the money? Well, the money's well, available if we modify the article in December at the town meeting. We don't have to wait. We're not talking a lot of money in a $20 million project. No. And, so if, and voters yeah. are not going to be happy when there aren't, when there aren't um, pilings there where they should be. So if we recommend the article for the town meeting, then they can put the pilings in, basically. If you, if you modify the article, the town meeting of the existing town's dredging fund, of yeah. which there is two and a half million dollars roughly, then some of that money can be transferred into an account to purchase new pilings. But so in, order to, in order to apply for that, you have to give the town meeting a figure, what it would take. And that's based on how many new pilings, you know, are yeah. going to be purchased. So it looks like 15 plus the other five, looks like about 20 pilings need to be bought and the installation will be carried out by the dredging company as they finish the dredging, right? While they're here. The number, Walter, the number is, I don't think is accurate. We're taking Will's working number, 28, that have to minimally be replaced new. We add to that the 17 existing ones that are old but usable. That gives you 45. You're still short 15. Right. So you need 28 new and, and 15 new, and that comes to a figure of 43. I thought he said there was 23 of those 28 that they were supplying, and we had to supply five of those. They're supplying, so they're supplying the, the manpower to install them at no cost to the town. And then don't forget, we're going back to the well shortly after this town meeting, maybe on the next town meeting and asking for an additional seven, $10 million to finish this dredging. Well, it's gonna be considerably lower that if we get, if we get two of the $2.5 million grants. And maybe if we get back to back to back max grants. Yeah, and that's a realistic possibility. Oh, so I have okay. one question. So for the 15, we'd have to pay for them to install those 15 too, correct? They're willing to install 28, no installation charge. Yeah, beyond, yeah. That, beyond that, the town would have to pay to them pack. an installation charge. How much do you think one of those installed is? Well, the engineer told us between 2,500 and 3,000. That's with the pole installed or just a pole? The material and the labor. And pole. Yes, that was a rough estimate. All right, so you call it about 3,000. Okay, thank you. So you're looking at 150 grand or something like that. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Well, not compared to 7 million or 20 million. Not compared to, and again, I come back to, you know, what are the voters' reasonable expectations in the spring? They know seven, the seven feet of water under their boats. It is a dredging project. It's not a rebuild the marina project yet. I mean, I mean, I hate to say, are, I mean, are these poles going to move if we decide to change the marina around a little bit? Yep. Yes, they will. They will. Yep. So we're going to spend like, you know, $50,000 to add 15 pilings to just move them again. Correct. That's correct. What is the likelihood that the marina, you know, the docks will be moved? Very likely. Very likely if we did consider evening out some of those canoe slips reorganizing, putting in finger slips, which has an extremely large demand, especially our aging clientele, who really shouldn't be climbing over the bows of a lot of these boats. 
Um, a lot of them find it extremely challenging. So finger docks are in high demand as well. So then we can line them up with each finger dock. Also, where we come with a lot of um, almost unusable slips, given the width of the current boats versus what we have in place, we could really, we have some real potential here to uh, really nicen this place up a bit. Any other thoughts or discussion? Okay, hearing none, we can move on. Um, there was um, another item brought up at the um, select board last evening. Um, let me just um, see if I can pull it up here. Just bear with me a minute. The um, one of the selectmen, Selectman Devasto, um, brought up a motion to have the um, Marina Advisory Committee um, do be responsible for writing a comprehensive plan um, of the um, marina. A uh, brief history, assessment of the current condition of the marina, its infrastructure, room for more slips, how was the use of the resource distributed, slips, ramp, parking, recreational, commercial, current problems, what conflicts exist, what improvements can be made, identify goals, and, and et cetera, provide solutions, planning, and ideas. Um, I offered, on a, I didn't feel comfortable responding to that without the support of members of the committee and their thoughts on it. I did offer that, well, let me, let me get into um, where I'm coming from and then we can throw it out to discussion. Um, as we have been reminded by various parties from time to time, we are an advisory committee. We are not town employees. We are not department heads. Um, in the past, the select board um, has asked us to advise on very specific limited topics. A couple of years ago, they wanted advisement from us on the issue of possibly placing electric charging car units at the marina. Some of you may remember that. And, and we discussed it and uh, decided it was not a good idea uh, because water, you know, overflowing and, and they accepted that. Um, several years ago, they asked us to, to study um, parking. Uh, we did a limited study with a couple of recommendations on that. Um, 10 years ago, there was the issue of the rules and regulations the harbor master at that time brought his plan to the table and the marina committee um, advised on it, offered suggestions for additions, deletions, um, and it went in that way. Um, Sam Pepper is, offered his skills as a, um, an accountant to examine the town's uh, enterprise um, um, numbers, which all of the committee felt was a good idea, so we know where we stand, um, and uh, was working with Will on that until the town lost the accountant, and hopefully when a new accountant is hired, um, that, that facet can be, um, um, can be renewed. Um, in the 20 years I've been on the committee, um, that's a sampling of the kinds of issues we've been asked to study. Um, we have never been asked to study something of this magnitude. Um, 
this is quite a project. And when I look at other town departments and other committees, um, it's typically the department head who would come up with this kind of a plan and bring it to the table of the advisory board. So your, your thoughts and discussion, please. Well, one, one factor here is I think Will's been talking about a master plan and I, you know, I'd kind of like to hear, you know, his input on that and how he, uh, you know, wants to move forward with that plan. That's one thing. And then the second thing I think is if we do do some type of master plan, I think that we need a, a, a professional planner to assist Will and, and, do, and our committee in doing that because I think that has a lot more teeth in terms of uh, grant applications because they know the buttons to push and exactly how to, you know, like do this correctly. But I think it definitely needs, you know, our input. But uh, as us physically doing it, I think that that should be left, uh, you know, to an actual planner. Yeah, that's a thought well taken because there are so many facets to this, um, one of them being financial, a huge one. Um, yeah, we have no budget. We right. have no budget. And how about, I think there's a tremendous amount of time and work that would have to be um, put into this. And, uh, well, but my question is, though, um, to, to Will, Will, you've been talking about a master plan. How, how do you see yourself proceeding with that? I would love for the advisory boards, uh, the advisory committee's help on that. Um, sort of like the Shellfish Advisory Board does and the Natural Resources Advisory Board does. Um, they come up with a, like a comprehensive uh, management plan for that um, with the department. So I, I would um, thoroughly enjoy uh, working with everyone to come up with a plan. No, but what no, but what I meant was you're talking about doing a master plan. Have, have you started to do some kind of legwork on that plan? Yeah, yes, I have. And one of them is the new docs that I keep talking about with the uh, finger okay. piers and, and pilings to match. But um, you know, well, it's been a battle. You know, I, I think it's, you know, one, one certainly identifying the needs. And I mean, some of them are pretty obvious, but then, then there's some probably additional ones. But I, I still really feel that, you know, getting some professional assistance with this is also important. I totally agree. There's too much. I mean, we can have input and we should have input. But to put a, put a report like these guys want together, I think it's going to take more than the year they're talking about. And uh, it has to be done professionally to really be... Uh, uh, done right, I think. And I know Will's going to work hard on it. And I think everybody here can put in some good stuff, but to put it all together, to research the history of the harbor, I mean, these guys want, a, you know, a book, basically. Uh, right. And uh, I do think that that we should, you know, be able to hire somebody to put all this stuff together. And, and I know Will's going to do a lot of work, but there's more than he can deal with because he's already got a bunch of stuff to deal with. So, there's people that there's people yeah. that specialize in this. It's exactly. a boilerplate thing. I, I I work with a you know a couple of different planning agencies on doing some work just like this, and and they like I said they know the buttons to push. They know the the points that you're going to get from you know grant applications, yep. and you know that's what they're paid for. Yeah, yeah, and they and they put in money in the grants to pay themselves, so they yeah. you know right could possibly do, be done without a lot of expenditure, but it has to be done by somebody that has those skills like you're talking about. To my knowledge, the Shellfish Advisory Board has never developed a management plan for the Shellfish Office and, and how what its needs are and how it should proceed. No, I don't think it's necessarily for the office itself. It's for the entirety of the um, scope of what's going on. It's, it's not a management plan for the office. Uh, just like this would be, um, even if we were to hire somebody, we would need a list of goals, hopes, wishes, thoughts to give to a person to start laying out. And oh yeah. I think this would be oh, a good start. I, I, I'd, love to, absolutely. I'd, love to, I'd love to contribute to that end of it, but as far as um, you know, the actual nuts and bolts, I, I think um, speaking to Martha's um, point. You, you definitely need um, a, a professional, uh, you know, someone who has the experience 
uh, and, and all of the keywords. And, you know, I was a grant writer for the police department in Reading for about 15 years. And I, and, and I know that if I didn't have the help from a lot of the state agencies that went through a lot of the, you know, the buzzwords, the key things that you needed to focus on, you weren't going to get the grant. So those are very important aspects to have. So you need those professionals in play. Um, but as far as uh, the advisory board goes, uh, you know, we want to do everything we can to make sure that, you know, you, you know, your, your goals and our goals come to fruition. I, I don't think there's any difference of opinion there. I, I want to see a better, better um, uh, harbor and a, and, a, and a better design. Um, and I think that, you know, that's a great start, but we, we just need to work together on it. And I think we need to come to an agreement that um, you have to have professional um, uh, entities involved in the process. And, well, and to, to, fill, to continue along that line of thinking, a professional in that field, when he comes in, he's going to do an evaluation. He right. doesn't need right. us to brief right. him on everything. He's going to look at everything and do an evaluation. Now, in 2009, the State Department of Revenue came in with their professionals. They did an evaluation on the Enterprise Fund. All of you read that document um, a year ago. It's still available, okay? So they knew exactly what to look for and, and had some really good insight into the Enterprise Fund and raised a red flag about the future in raising revenue and offered some specific recommendations. That's the kind of professionalism I think we're talking about here. Well, and what they'll do is they'll come in and they will meet with Will and his staff and they will meet and then th they'll be the actual people that will be spearheading this, but they'll meet with them, they'll meet with us, they'll meet with other users, uh, they'll meet with all the different users of the, the uh, harbor front and, and they will determine their you know, what is needed and they'll come up with a plan. And, you know, we can, then we'll have the input to modify the plan or to, you know, adapt the plan to, you know, like the town's usages, but- To advise, uh, to advise. Right, exactly. but, but you know what? We talk is cheap here. And we, we talk about this and talk about it, but if we're gonna do it, you know, and we're gonna get it done, you know, in a reasonable amount of time, we've got to set some type of plan ourselves in motion to whether we, you know, do the research and try to hire somebody in the immediate future to start to put this in motion because this, this type of stuff takes, you know, like a couple of years to do. Let me respond to that, Martha. First of all, it was also mentioned last night that if we did this, the expectation is we would conduct public hearings for the public to have input, okay? Absolutely. What I'm, what I'm gonna recommend now, I'm willing to draft a letter to the select board and present it at our next Marina meeting for your review of that draft. And in, in the draft, I would um, write along the lines of which you're speaking now, that there's an outstanding need here for a professional. If we don't have that expertise or those skills, um, we don't have the time, we're not paid employees, many of us work full time, and with a strong recommendation that the town, you know, authorize the hiring of a professional to come in and to do that. Well, and here's what I, I think that maybe could be done, you know, like in the next month or two. First of all, I think that maybe Will, you could talk to, you know, like a couple other, you know, harbor masters and some other communities that have done some revitalization of their waterfront and find out, you know, who they've used as planners. And I think that, you know, we have an assistant town administrator that's supposed to be a planner here. And hopefully, you know, she'd have some information on groups that they have used because there are people that's, that they're, I've worked with this. There are people that specialize in waterfront, you know, like uh, grants. There are people that specialize in waterfront development. Um, I, I, I saw a few online, Martha, a while back when I was doing some research for the dredging committee. There are definitely some in Massachusetts who specialize in that, including a division of GEI, our engineers. 
who have some people, all they do is marina evaluation and design. Would you like me to bring a draft to and, the and, table? And not, and not only, well, not only that, I mean, that these people are well aware of a lot of grants out there. Yes. Um, I, you know, <laughs> I worked for years with the Erie Canal Quarter Project all across the top part of New York State, and HUD dumped a ton of money into that, a ton of money. I agree with Joe. I think we should uh, write a letter to the selectmen saying that this is beyond our scope and that we need professional assistance. I think we got railroaded a little bit at that meeting last night, Joe. Uh, select, the, select The shell fisherman basically said, uh, if there's anything to do with shell fishing and, and um, shell fishing boundaries and gear, talk to us, don't deal with it. I mean, that's what I got out of it. And uh, then they dumped this thing on us that's way beyond our scope. Uh, that I just had to say that, that's, that was my feeling at that meeting. We got run over, I think. And okay. uh, for those that weren't, I'm sorry, go ahead, Walter. No, so, so I agree that we should write a letter back to those guys saying, this is a very good idea, but we need expert assistance, basically. I agree with you, Walter, 100%. I was at the meeting like you were. I agree with you 100%. Do you want me to write a draft, a working draft that everybody can jump on at the next yes. meeting? Walter, yep. yes? Yes, for me. Martha? Yes. Will? Will Barry? Yes. yes. Uh, Sam? Ed? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, Joe, I, I think include in there what we should do is um, is say that we really want to have an article, a Warren article to um, appropriate the money for this study, for this plan. Um, so we don't know what that number is right um, mm -hmm. at this point. Th that's what we need to find out what, what it costs. But we want to make sure that we have a placeholder at town meeting so we can get that money set aside so we can we can we can do this. Okay, um, there is another issue that was brought up last night at the select board that directly affects this committee. Um, as Walter and David know, um, I gave the overview from the notes of July 14th about our concern, safety, navigation, um, complaints received from boaters, specifically um, Blackfish Creek, um, Mayo, all of the stuff that you wanted brought up on the table. Um, Selectman DeVasto objected to my bringing that up. And he said this committee had no right to hear those complaints and to process them. And I referred to our charge and um, the charge, and I'm quoting from it, examine complaints made by any vessel owner or other user of the marina, and then referring recommendations as such to the harbor master. Um, right. That was not satisfactory. So the, the open question remained about the charge and the mission of this committee, whether or not we have the right to hear voter complaints. It was DeVasto's opinion that he offered to the board that um, per the charge, we should only hear complaints limited at the marina itself and not from voters. And that was after he recused himself, but became a, a, a someone that said something as a as a public citizen, which um, I don't know whether or not there's a conflict of interest there, uh, but that it certainly didn't rub right with me. No. Uh... So I do think that we need to discuss this and what you want to do, if anything, about it. Oh. Do you want to approach the select board on that issue and say, you define it? Give us some direction. It, I mean, the way it sounded to me was uh, we should just, if we get any complaints about shellfish gear, dump it right on the shellfish advisory in the selectman's lap. Well, that's, that's what it seemed to me like they, they were looking at. And of course, they won't do anything about it. But well, he said the complaints should also go to the NRAB. 
not to the Marine Advisory Committee. Uh, I disagree with that personally, but uh, if I they mean, want to deal with it, I mean, I think we should forward anything we get about shellfish grants right to those guys and say, here, you know, what do you want to do with this? Because that's, they just told us to stuff it basically. Yeah, the whole safety of the harbor atmosphere and the and the harbor master is responsible for the safety of the harbor. I don't even get what they're exactly, going on. exactly. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. It's we're stepping on their. They think we're stepping on their toes. Is what it, what it boils down to. Well, we're not. Stepping that was on my anything. perception of it. Yeah. Coexist yeah. and everybody needs to have a you know coexist in the harbor and have it friendly for everybody. That's what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to take anybody out. Right. Exactly. Right. You're right. I mean, well, Nancy Alfred, was. Walter's comments, I think, were an extension of the early um, angry comments directed toward the committee about providing educational materials so we could be knowledgeable about shellfishing and shellfishing grants and, and not, not doing a task, which was not accurate when I went back and looked at the, at the tape. So it was a continuation of that. But, you know, the public's expectation out there, we've learned, is that, you know, voters' complaints come to this committee. And if, you know, we have to make a decision whether or not we're going to continue to hear them. Um, and the select board has to, if they want to change the charge, then they change the charge. But Selectman DeVasto, I think I'm very accurately representing him. Walter and David were there, um, said we have no business, you know, hearing complaints other than to do with the, the structure of the marina. He said it was outside of our scope. That's correct. Yes. If, no, you, Nancy. Remember, if, if you remember correctly, when we all started this, we talk, call for a balance between shellfish grants and recreational boaters. We call for a discussion. And now you've stepped on some toes and you pissed some people off. That's all, that's all this is. Will Barrio, what do you think? I, don't, I mean, honestly, I mean, if it's like a regulation issue of voters hitting stuff, I mean, that should be brought to the shellfish advisory board you know for the layouts of everything i know they're having a lot of issues with you know the grants and the locations right now as well um nancy's trying to get us all to pony up and resurvey all the farms that's one of the new ones i've heard um so i don't I don't really know on that aspect. I mean, technically, I would think that it would go to the harbor and it would have to be a shellfish advisory board, you know, committee issue or the shellfish department, you know, if they're hitting gear. And, and if gear is too high and it impedes boater safety, shouldn't that be the harbor advisories uh, situation? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've had gear hit that wasn't high as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just one of those things. People just don't really know what all the buoys mean. The more buoys, the more fun it is, and they try to drive through them. I swear to God. I'm I've had hazard buoys out, and they still hit all my stuff. I'm, I'm trying to represent, you know, we've got, we got 500 boaters out there, mm -hmm. and, and, and they have a reasonable expectation of where they can bring their complaint to. If they suffer damage, otherwise, you know, they need to know where to bring the complaint. You now, we know um, on the record, on the record, we know from the July 14th meeting, which Nancy attended, um, Becca Taylor and Tom, uh, Nancy's statement was, every grant is where it's supposed to be and there aren't any infractions that she's aware of with equipment being too high. So if a boater runs into rebar and they go to the SAD and the shellfish warden, is that gonna be an appropriate place for them to deal with? Do you have a, a list of all the complaints in the past year? Who's that? Joe, Joe, do you have- Sorry, say that again. 
Joe, do you have a list of all the complaints in the past year? Voter complaints? No. Yeah. Voter complaints are supposed to be submitted in writing to the harbor master and, and they can talk with us and make us aware of them. And in the community, as the members will tell you, you know, as they interact with voters, that's what they, that's what they say. Okay, so um, well, I guess that wouldn't work. I was, I was suggesting that the Marine Advisory could take its list of complaints that it's received and, and forward that uh, to show the, the types and the scope of the complaints that they have received. Um, to my knowledge, know. every harbor master I've ever you know, talked to, that's, that's his domain. He's a town employee, we're not, he's a department head. Yeah, but I was just referring to the complaints that you're saying that you received. I was just wondering if we had a list of well, them. Well, we all get comments from time to time. Look at Kevin's comments, you know, at the last two meetings about the rebar. And, and Kevin, do you want to review that? I don't think Will was present at the July 14th meeting. And Kevin, you had a lot to say there about your concerns about safety. Do you want to do a quick review. My, my, my concerns on safety, and as I, I said, as I stated before, is we needed to have a conversation about balance and the number of grants to boat to boat uh, areas. Now we're talking about extending other grants into Hilda and extensions. And Nancy doesn't even know where the grants are. You talk to anybody about Blackfish Creek, and they'll tell you they get up in there and they run into gear. Alfred putting Morins in will run, run in a gear up there. It just, it's just a mess. Uh, the channels are marked. Jesus, it wasn't too long ago you'd go up there and there'd be guys uh, water skiing. You'd see uh, right at the end of my street, water skiers, and, and you don't see them up there. And Nancy's comment to me was, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, not, I'm not here arguing. Um... Any, any of Kevin's or anyone's concerns. I'm just asking for a list of the complaints that we could give to them and show what kind of complaints that you've received. I mean, Kevin's, you know, they're on public record, they're on a meeting, um, that's just as good as writing. But I'm talking about an actual list that, um, you know, for public record's sake that you could forward to that group to show the scope of what, what you're receiving. Will, the only problem that I have with that, a lot of that is, and, and I hate to use the word, but it, it ends up becoming hearsay. A lot, a lot of people that I talk to don't want to say anything. I have a paddleboard uh, client of mine. He has friends that are shell fishermen. He doesn't paddle up in there anymore because he's afraid he's going to get skewered on equipment if he falls off his paddleboard, but he won't say anything. Yeah, and that, that's kind of the problem with hearsay and, and public meetings and um, exactly you know, in the town. I mean, there's not supposed to be any rebar sticking straight up out of the water as well. I mean, if that's part of the case, then that, that should be attended to. I mean, I use like a uh, half inch PVC pipe just to mark my poles because my farm's deep. So I don't, you know, so I know how to get in there. But I mean, you can basically flex that right around and it's not really going to affect too much. I mean, you know, a lot of people use the, uh, you know, driveway stakes to mark out clam runs and stuff like that. But I mean, if you have, you know, steel rebar sticking up, um, I will say that Nancy is all over that. Um, Walter, I will vouch Walter, for that. Walter, you're next. Uh, I got a letter a month or so ago, an email from a guy down South Wellfleet. Uh, Ted, Ted DeSantos, I think his name, DiCarlo, that I forwarded to you, uh, Joe, uh, if I could find, and he was pretty specific, and this guy's a PhD, and he laid it all out in this email, and uh, he's been around Blackfish Creek for all his life. His parents had a cottage down there off Old War somewhere, uh, or Pleasant Point, somewhere down there, and uh, I could, I can definitely get, I uh, think I can get the whole of that email uh, and uh, send it out it. to all of us. I'll look for it. Uh, hopefully I can find it. But uh, this guy was pretty serious about his complaints. And I, I that that I can definitely uh, I'll look for it for sure. And 
who I got a new computer, so I don't know <laughs> if things got disappeared or not. But uh, the, I can I can definitely look for that and uh, forward that out yeah, that as an example of what you know what people are complaining about down there. Okay. And then I have one uh, thing to say about uh, Nancy. Yesterday, she did try to smooth the waters a bit. She said that they are getting a grant to uh, resurvey boundaries, certain boundaries of certain grants. Uh, to start laying things out where they're supposed to be. And she did mention the fact that there was an agreement at that meeting of laying out a channel in Blackfish Creek with red and green buoys that Alfred said he was going to supply. And that was not going to happen this year, but uh, it's supposed to happen next year. Uh, so there is a couple, there are positive steps. Plus she's working on more information about grants to, uh, uh, you know, and the shellfish business in, in general to hand out to the public to educate them. And I think Will's right. I think a lot of people think there's a ton of rebar out there and there's not that much rebar. There are the cages and stuff, but it, there's a lot of misconceptions. And I think uh, education is gonna be a, a big chunk of this whole deal. Um, I, I really agree with Walter on that. I, I think that, you know, and I, I think that we need to have a maybe a joint meeting with the uh, shellfish committee again too. So it's I to take away the perception of it's us against them. Mm. Um, I think that you know they need to understand that you know everybody's trying to work together you know for the benefit of all of us, and uh, mm. you know we're just trying to educate the community so the community's not on top of their grants and you know into their gear and. Uh, you, you know, I, I just think the education and I, I think the cooperation uh, for both committees is what's needed. I agree. agree with that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, I was I was not um, real happy about the position I was in last night no. because only two members were there. I, I never, you know, when I called you and, you know, I emailed you and you said the meeting wasn't going to happen at seven o'clock. I turned my computer off and about two hours later, I looked and five minutes after that, you had said, are you there? Get on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think, um, I think all of you need to present your concerns, not just me at a joint meeting. So, I mean, we can look at having a joint meeting to keep us on track. We're back to the original issue of of the contesting of voters bringing complaints to this committee. How do you want to proceed on that? Do you want to do nothing or do you want to bring it to the select board for definition or other thoughts, please? I think the voters' concerns should go to Will. I mean, that's, he's the harbor master. Mm -hmm. And they should that. be doc and they should be documented if, if, right. if there's, if there's yes. If there's complaints, let's let's uh, bring them to Will's attention and let's get that daily log going so that we can read it and it's public record because that there, needs to there, be transparent. There was a mention of the fact that there were no recorded incidents. There was that that was mentioned last night, uh, I think by Nancy, <laughs> and there were no recorded in, in, incidents at, by the harbor master. That 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 was definitely mentioned. One of the issues that I presented um, briefly, though, was the issue that all of you raised at that July 14th meeting. Kevin, you were especially um, strong on it, the issue of liability of, of you know, some Kevin, as you said, something's going to happen. Um, we can't wait for it. You know, we've got to be proactive. And, and again, it goes back to that to the comment I said before is start the conversation that there has to be balance. East Tim has 16 grants on the Bay side. I talked to Nikki Payne. I could be off 16 on the Bay side, 13 on the ocean side. That's all they're giving out, 29. All they're giving out is 29 grants. What do we have, under 100, Will? I think there's 94 grants in town. Yeah, somewhere around there, it's hard to keep yeah, I, 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 I talked to Nikki a couple of days ago and she, and she said that, that those were the numbers that was, there was like 29 in East Ham altogether between the Bayside and Nauset Marsh area. And, and, and there's five and five that have actually been granted. So, I mean, 
they, they talk about us having a master plan for the harbor. What about a master plan on the shellfish development uh, and grants? Uh, we, we, all, we all have been here long enough that we saw this industry uh, flourish and basically explode uh, from a few grants off of Mayo Beach to Blackfish Creek being inundated with grants. So, I mean, we, we, we talk, they talk about a plan for us. What about a plan for that? Are any of those grants gonna go back wild? Uh, when people, uh, it says right in the rules that if you go over your extended areas, you lose your grant. No, no laws are being, those rules aren't being enforced. Kevin, um, we have a joint meeting with them. Are you prepared to say what you just said? Absolutely. But Joe, as I said, we were flipped. I agree with Martha. I turned my computer off. I made other plans when you said that it was canceled. I was going to talk alone when everybody else couldn't make the meeting. I get, as you all know, I have no problem speaking up, but uh, that's the way I see it. Um, this, this, that was a plan. I'll schedule a joint meeting. We'll talk about that in a minute. So in answer to my original question regarding the issue of complaints, are we in agreement that anything we hear should be referred to the Harbor Master? Yes, I agree. I think so. Okay. But, but, but can I get a clarification on that? Because then again, it becomes hearsay. Anything we hear. If, some, if someone runs into Will's gear, Will should report to who? The harbor master or the shellfish board? Because there's a whole bunch of shell fishermen that get gear run over every year. This should be a follow-up by Will once the complaint is given to him so that he can actually determine whether or not there was a complaint. And if there is a complaint, there should be documentation. Even if there was uh, nothing found, uh, that should be documented as well with an explanation as to why it was founded the way it was. There shouldn't be a complaint that's given to us that we parlayed a will with a name or, an inf or information. And then, you know, Will can't do anything with it because he doesn't know who it is. So he can go and address it. And if there is an issue, then, you know, Will will do his due diligence as the harbor master to um, investigate it and um, uh, document it appropriately. That's what should be done. Now the charge reads, examine complaints made by any vessel owner or other user of the marina and referring any recommendations regarding such to the harbor master. That's the charge. So what Dave said is, um, is a simple management plan of, of the Harbor Master documenting it and making a decision. But that comes, that comes from the boater. What about the shell fisherman that has gear damage? No. Well, does that, that end that up becoming that, that are damaged That are damaged by a boater? Right. Well, the Harbor Master under chapter 90 has jurisdiction over the boater. So the complaint should go to the harbor master. And I don't know if it goes to the harbor master. I think it might go to Nancy. Will Barrio, where's it go? Uh, it goes into the scrapyard. Uh, <laughs> and I just move on with my day. <laughs> <laughs> and then the seagulls eat it. <laughs> um, my, I'm looking at my screen. Bob Hussey, did you have a comment? I, I think it would probably be, a, you know, just it would be a joint notification because it, it encompasses both departments. Mm -hmm. You mean the Shellfish Advisory Board and the Harbor Master? I don't or know if it would be the Advisory Board if it would be the Shellfish Department constable. as well yeah, as the Wealthy Harbor Master. Yeah. 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 Send it to the Constable, Shellfish Constable. The yep. shellfish. I think the tricky part is going to be having getting people to actually make the complaint in writing or, or in some way more than hearsay, as uh, Kevin says, uh, that's going to be the, that's going to be the, the kicker, you know, 
Uh, that has been the hard part for us is is getting to them to document that um you know and, and give us that in in a writing for that i mean you know i'm sure um dave and and bob can both speak to that you know to, to follow up i mean you know we we need to get them to give it to us um in, in a little little more and a lot of them like like will said that you know when that kind of thing happens they just get frustrated and um you know for whatever reason, you know, maybe that wasn't done in the past or, it, you know, wasn't followed up on, but um, we're certainly willing as we've, we've shown to a lot of people, we, we will, when they make the complaint, try to follow up, but, but we need that documentation from them. Yeah, that's the hard part. Yeah. It is, and, and, that's, and, that's, and that's where <clears throat> the, the problem with an anonymous complaint comes in and, and, and that's what happens a lot. You'll get an, an anonymous complaint with someone not willing to identify themselves uh, for whatever reason, and um, it, it, it leaves the enforcing uh, personnel in a, in a very tough spot. It should still be investigated and documented so that, you know, um, in, in the event the matrix could be formed down the road, if there's um, additional violations that match the same MO and, um, you know, more evidence is revealed, and then you can maybe uh, divulge on your own investigative skills uh you know what 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 uh, had transpired um but uh, you know it, it, the anonymous complaints are, are difficult uh, but i do believe that um documentation is uh is the key um, so i think we should go with our charge and hear a complaint or if we get a complaint document it you know and have the person document it and send it on to the harbor master basically okay yep. look i'm i'm looking i'm looking at the charge okay mm -hmm. and i think we can make some real progress at the last sentence examine complaints made by any vessel owner or other user of the marina and referring any recommendations regarding such to the harbor master as i read that my interpretation of it is hearing complaints about the marina and then including the harbor master and making a recommendation. Is that how you read it? It's general. It's a, that's a general, that's a general statement. Um, uh, you know, it, 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 is, is that, you know, uh, where we want to go with it? Do we want to stay general or be a little bit more specific? Well, that's, you know, one interpretation of that is it's specific regarding the marina only. And mm -hmm. if we if we want to adopt that interpretation of it, then all all boater complaints outside of the marina would go to the harbor master. Mm -hmm. That sounds like what it says. Exactly. Right. Yep. Okay, so if that's what you want to do, our position from now on would be to hear complaints from any vessel owner or other user of the marina regarding the marina. And any boater complaints outside of the marina need to go to the harbor master. That sounds reasonable. I agree with that. What if it's on a mooring? That's part of the marina. Well, what if the moorings land in the marina? What if it's moored off of Mayo Beach or Black? Still Beach? in the purview. It's still in the purview of the harbor master. I know. I'm just. Yeah, I would surprised. say any 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 complaint that you receive when when forwarded to me, I will be following up on that. So any and every complaint could be forwarded right to us, so we could follow up on them, regardless of where it is. Right. And if um, it has to do with shellfishing, we will also um, include the shellfish warden or constable in that. And then we can both uh, document them and, and work on that immediately. Yeah. Many years ago, I had my boat on a mooring. A former selectman in his power boat ran through my mooring and destroyed it. Uh, I wrote a complaint to the harbor master. He did an investigation. Um, found that person at fault, talked to him, and the person gave me a check for a new mooring. 
It was an investigation done. It was documented. It was in writing from me. And then the harbor master documented it, like David said, in writing. It was a matter of record. And I think that's important to compile a record if there are repeat offenders problems. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's what we've been talking about. Exactly. Yep. OK. Um, I have a suggestion. Um, it is 9 o'clock. Um, we're looking at the next meeting to review the draft I'm going to present to you regarding that, that issue of that huge project. We could also address the remaining issue tonight, Marina Parking. I think those two issues are going to take up a full meeting. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I'm to I'm toast tonight. I I, yeah. I, I I'm 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 for, I for one am I'm I'm all game for for, for uh, truncating this and going forward on the next one with those issues. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Dave. Yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm looking at November 10th, four weeks from today. I'll have the draft for you. I sent you the diagrams and the materials on parking. Again, I recommend you read the parking recommendations from the task force. It can be found online. Um, only a, a limited part of it is for the marina. The rest is for beaches and for downtown. Um, and also to bring to the meeting your thoughts, you know, about um, contributing to that draft as to, you know, support our argument that um, this is a huge project that we are not capable of and don't feel we should be doing as an advisory committee. Any other sure. questions yeah, Joe, or comments? Joe, for, for the meeting prep, um, do you, you know how it's always been said about the state requirements having the state boat ramp, um, i.e. parking spaces, trailer parking spots, um, you know, overnight parking, trailer parking. Do, do you have any documentation on that? You know, I'd have to look, but my recollection is this. The state gave us 450 grand for the new ramp. They made the stipulation very clear for the um, 60 trailer parking spots, 58 and two handicap. Um, some years ago, um, the Harbor Master uh, appealed to the state along with the town of Truro to raise the $10 fee and they denied it. They said that it was um, a reasonable fee for the, for the um, public to afford. That's my recollection of it. They okay. wanted it free, but we said it, we've been charging 10 bucks. So they said, okay, basically. All right. What, so one thing I'll try to get from the um, state for that meeting is um, any documentation on to, to make sure that going forward, we remain uh, legal with, with the state's requirements, i.e., you know, the amount of handicap spots, um, you know, the amount of trailer spots, the amount of if, if, if we're allowed to do overnight trailers, um, you know, or seasonal leases. Uh, I just want to remain on the legal side of um, the state going forward. So. I'll try to get from the state that documentation. Anybody have anything else? Will, okay. um, Will, this is Sam. If you need any help tracking down information on the comprehensive plan, um, if you can give me any leads, I'll be happy to follow up on them about other places that may have done a similar so we can get a little more um, information on, you know, who would be qualified to do it and what it might cost and the length of time it would take to do it, things like that. But I can do some legwork for you if you give me some leads. Yeah, sure. Sam. Uh, you can go, you know, here's a recommendation for everybody. Okay. Okay. Go online, go online. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, Martha, I Martha, wait, wait, okay. hold on. Go online. I went on the GEI website. Um, they have a whole department of professional layout people. They did, I recall, I think it was the Salem Salem um, Harbor. They sent one of their design engineers and, and, and he spent two hours with Mike Flanagan, Will, and myself. At that time, the town 
was considering the purchase of the Kendrick Avenue property. And the questions we had, putting fuel tanks there, uh, restroom and so forth, but that was his specialty is evaluating marinas and offering recommendations for a design. There are others online as well, okay? They're pretty prominent. They're not hard to find. Take a look at those. That okay. would be helpful for our discussion. Martha. Yeah, I've already done some research on that. Um, there's a lot of different places that have done comprehensive marina master, uh, master plans. Um, Peyton Aram is one of them. And now they have like about a 20 some odd num number marina advisory committee. And they did a lot of that themselves with their town planner and they divided it up into sections. But there's several other ones. Uh, Gloucester has used, uh, you know, a, an environmental architectural firm. Uh, you know, there's a couple different places in Boston. Uh, Hingham has used some. Um, I, I think maybe, you know, what we should do is, you know, talk to several of these different towns and get some information on who they've used and, uh, you, you know, just call them and ask them. It, it's, they're not going to charge us anything to, to talk about what they can do. Can you send out a list, Martha, um, since you've already done some research of, uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I'd be happy to do follow up on that. I, yeah. I just don't have any, I don't have a starting point. So, okay. I'll give you Here's one thing I found, Sam, that might be helpful. Okay. When I went online and looked at a couple of them, they had a portfolio of the harbors they had done. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. there's a good lead in to call those people. Yep. Okay. Independently, yeah. you know. Yeah. They want to show yeah. off their wares, what they accomplished. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think we want, you know, I think that's the, I think that's the teeth that we need to be able to push back on this and say that this is a major undertaking that we need a professional services firm to handle for us. So yep. and, sounds and, like good stuff to discuss next time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And 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 Sam, just to take that a step further, that would bolster our case with the select board if we can present some definitive places that had to use professional services. And well, let's, yeah. let's back up a little bit here too. Um, do, you, hang on. do you think um, that we should maybe, you know, come up with a list and Sam, I'll get you a list of some of the ones I've done some research on, and maybe you can do some research on some other ones too. Sure. But do you think we ought to involve the assistant town manager who's supposed to be the town planner in this too, um, you know, to get the support going forward from there? My suggestion would be to do the initial legwork. I think that's what a planner would want us to do. And then bring, bring those ideas to the table when we have something definite to show yeah. her that we'd like that, to do. I agree. I think that's a good approach, Joe. I agree. So Martha, if you can do that when you have a chance, shoot me an email and I will def definitely do I that. will follow up and I'll look at that website that Joe referenced too. All right. Okay. But Thank you. to to make note on Sam's initial point was how much is the select board going to appropriate cash wise for this? Well, our research could uh, reveal that. Yeah, I think we need Kevin. I think we need, um, and you know, these guys will give you a ballpark if if they think they have potential work. Um, you know, a GEI or another firm, they'll give you a range of value and we can put that in the Warren article, you know, whatever it would be. Right. So we, we need a ballpark from a number from a, from a firm. And, and one of the things I learned by looking at them is, is what I found valuable is they do an evaluation, a needs assessment first before they actually develop a plan. And I think we would all agree, we would really value a needs assessment yep. and how to proceed. Well, especially because we're just having all this um, $20 million dredging project, which is gonna culminate next year. So our needs may, may increase significantly. So it's perfect timing for that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thanks. It is 9-11. Um, thank you everybody. We had a good session and we will see you on November 10th and look for your emails and ideas. All right. Sounds, we'll have sounds a good. All right. I All make right. a motion we adjourn right. this meeting. And I'll I'll second, second it. Second, third.
Walter and Kevin. Who's the fourth? <laughs> I think that can it. Wow. Ricky. Okay. I think uh, right roll now. call. Walter. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Martha. Aye. Dave. Aye. Flip. Flip. Flip's gone. Flip's gone. Flip, flip, flip. Ed, Ed Kane. Absolutely. Kevin. <laughs> Will Barrio. Aye. Man. All right. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night.